Hi, welcome back to another episode of Nature Aquariums TV, where today we're going to be discussing the differences of GH, KH, PH, what does it all mean for your tank and the health of your fish and plants. Before we get to our video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and leave your comments below. So a lot of our customers have a lot of questions on hard water, soft water, what is GH, what is KH, what does it all mean to me, and the health and safety of their fish and plants. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be discussing GH, KH as it pertains to freshwater tanks. Even though there's very similar interactions in salt water, but that'll be a video on another time. Getting back to the subject, there's two things that you can use to measure the hardness and softness of water. First of all, let's define what does hard water or soft water mean. Unfortunately, there, the terms are used loosely and to refer one to the other. So let's start first with water on, or refers to pH. So pH is the, how acid or how alkaline water is, and that's usually measured on a scale, seven being neutral, and the lower the number, the more acidic water is, and the higher the number, more alkaline the water is. Now, pH is a result of how many carbonate hardness there is in the water. So carbonate hardness is actually a true measure of the water's ability to retain or not let a pH drop below a certain level. And the carbonate hardness, it's what keeps water steady. So for example, carbonate hardness starts from zero, which is gonna be like RODI water, which has no carbonates in it, and can go as high as whatever you like it to be. But to give you a point of reference, natural seawater has a carbonate hardness, or KH as it's commonly known, of between seven to eight. African cichlid tanks will run a carbonate hardness between eight and 10, what we call hard water animals. And the reason the water is hard is, well, do everything possible to keep the pH from dropping. Now, when you're looking at beta fish or discus or a lot of tropical fish, they like a much softer water, which would refer a lower carbonate hardness, usually between three to four. If you're keeping Cardinia shrimp, they like to have a very, very soft water and usually a carbonate hardness between zero to two at the most. So most tap waters, the municipalities, they put in carbonate buffers to keep the water stable. Down here in South Florida, our water, believe it or not, when it comes to the alkalinity or the acidity of it is very soft. It has an alkaline between one and two, which means that if you put in any wood or any planted medium substrates, which soften the water, that alkalinity gets eroded very, very quickly. Now, the second part that we're going to talk about is general hardness, the water's concentration of calcium and magnesium ions in there. That's something that is also referred to as water being hard or soft. And that is something more visible to you. If you've ever had uh, calcium deposits on your teapot or your coffee pot, or you see that calcium build up around your kitchen faucet, that is the calcium that's in the water. That also refers to hard or soft water. And you can see where the confusion starts lying. Well, if I have hard water on my KH and soft water on my GH, can that be possible? Yes. The KH and GH, GH referring to general hardness or the concentration of calcium and magnesium ions in water versus the carbonates, which is KH, are both independent. So in other words, you can have a very hard water high in calcium, but it can be very soft when it comes to the acidity or the alkalinity of it. And the two tests are mutually exclusive. In other words, uh, a pH test kit will not tell you if you have a lot of calcium in your water. It's only going to measure a relative sense of how alkaline or not alkaline your water is. The question is, how do we test for it? Well, the majority of the master test kits do not have a GHKH test. It's usually a separate test. The aquarium co-op does have a pH, a KH, and a GH 
uh, testing in there and they're fairly accurate. They're not going to give you the accurate down to the degrees of hardness, but they're going to show you and as a general rule of where your water is. So now that we've established that there is different testing for general hardness, GH, and alkalinity, pH, what does it mean for your tanks and for your plants and for your fish? Well, different fish like have being in certain ranges of alkalinity or KH that regulates their kidney functions, their ability to stay hydrated and so many other functions. And they rely on what's called the osmotic pressure, which is the exchange of salts and water through their kidneys from the surrounding water. This osmotic regulation is what keeps a fish hydrated. One of the most common causes of death that we've seen is when you take a fish from one KH water, say a three or four, and you immediately put them in, even though you just floated the bag in the tank for 30 minutes, and you release them into a KH of say one. Their kidneys usually cannot handle that change, and the fish ends up having a salt issue. So they may end up dehydrating, even though they're swimming in water. Some fish use the KH as a spawning indicator, uh, in other words, when it's been a dry season and now you get uh, rains, the KH of the water would change in a freshwater pool or river or basin, and therefore that'll spawn as well. So what do I do if my tank has really high KH and I want to bring it down? Well, that's where an acid buffer comes into place or adding wood to your tank or adding a nutrient-rich substrate like contrasoil from Ultimate Nature Systems or a shrimp soil, which they all have humic acids built in and they lower the pH of the water and conversely lowering the pH. A lot of times you'll notice that if you already had that in your tank and you're adding high pH water, it's going to soften it. The side effect of it is when you're going from a high pH water and putting in a substrate like shrimp soils or or planted aquarium soils is that your plants will really grow well and that's because it's converting the alkalinity into carbon dioxide and that's one of the reasons why those soils are that way so what do you do if your kh is really low this has been an issue down here in south florida because as i mentioned before the tap water is a kh between one and two and by the time you add fish or you're cycling the tank the bacteria starts releasing carbon dioxide into the water, which acidifies the water further. Well, the problem that we have is the bacteria stop their growth and multiplying and colonizing your filtration system if the KH drops around one or less. So therefore, you need to add an alkaline buffer or crushed coral to supplement the alkalinity to raise it up. So that way, as you're cycling the tank, you don't lose your cycle or you don't stall. So what do you do to control the general hardness or GH? Well, if you're very low, you add a product like Equilibrium or any GH booster type of products. There's a couple of them out there. We're partial to the Equilibrium. It's easy to dose and it dissolves rather well. And you get a lot of it for a small price. If you have too high of general hardness, then you're probably gonna have to mix your water changes with some RODI water to cut back how much you're putting in there. Now remember, no change should ever be drastic. So if you have fish living under a certain condition and you need to lower the general hardness or the alkalinity, it is best to do it gradually over a course of a week or two weeks to let time for their kidneys and their bodies to adjust. It is far more dangerous to go down in alkalinity and general hardness than it is to go up. Usually they can handle going up easier than they can going down. And that's something for you to keep in mind. The last part I wanted to cover is take a look at the rocks and substrate that you may have in your tank. A lot of these are meant to buffer water up or down. Some of these rocks, even though they may look inert, may not be inert. And they may be adding additional alkalinity or they may be adding additional calcium. You have to be careful. A nice piece of coral rock may be adding tons of alkalinity, even though it looks great and your fish like it. So 
don't forget to look at the source of that. If you ever want to test to see if a water if a rock is reactive, take it out of the tank, uh, dry it off, and get some white distilled vinegar, and put a couple of drops onto the rock. If it starts fizzing, it means that the water the the rock is very high in carbonates and or calcium, and that's why it's reacting with the acid. And then you may want to look at to see where you really want to be in, in your tank's water parameters. So we hope we've helped simplify this whole mystery of uh, KH and GH. I know it's, it's very confusing. It was confusing when we were learning it a long time ago. But if you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave them down below. We want to thank you again for watching this video. And if you liked it, like, share, and subscribe and catch the other videos right over here. Thanks for watching.